Hey everybody, how are you today? I am here in my house in Atlanta, in my office, with all my things, my dollhouse, my card catalog, and my ukulele, and it's kind of a weird day, even though I'm just sitting here in my office, because everybody in my house is home. Everybody I live with, who usually goes to school or work, is home with me today. Um, and that feels different. And I think that's probably what's going on for you too, is that you are home with a bunch of people and maybe you're getting a little bored. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, but so I thought I would read you a story. And, and what I thought maybe we could talk about today, since I'm gonna read you a story, is fiction and nonfiction. And, and you may or may not already have heard these words before, but fiction is when you tell a story that you make up from your imagination. So you come up with a cool idea, like you think, well, what if I woke up on Tuesday and I had turned into a dragon? And that has never really happened to you, but you think to you play it out and you think to yourself, what would happen next if I woke up and I was a dragon? And you think, okay, well maybe I would run around in the yard because I'd want to try out my wings. But then when you run around the yard and try out your wings, you like accidentally catch, you know, the rose bush on fire. And then when the rose bush catches fire, your sister runs out and you think she's going to put the fire out, but instead she roasts a marshmallow. Like that's fiction, unless that has actually happened to you which I do not think is the case because you are probably not a dragon because dragons do not know how to watch videos. Now, that's fiction. There are lots of different ways for coming up with fiction. And when I was a kid, I used to, I didn't know it at the time, but I used to make up a lot of fiction just by playing. So I would play imaginary games where I would pretend like I was a ballerina on a stage with an audience, or I would pretend like I was a chef cooking in a kitchen, or I would pretend like I was a mermaid uh, running, swimming away from some sharks. I would play these games in my yard or in my bedroom or with dolls or with art supplies. I would use my imagination and make things up. And sometimes you write it down and make it a story. And sometimes you just do it in your imagination. That's fiction. Nonfiction is when you tell a story that is true. So nonfiction could be a story about ancient knights in France, or it could be a story about dinosaurs, or it could be a story about an archaeologist who discovers an interesting castle, right? Um, it, it could be all sorts of interesting things, uh, as long as they're real, as long as they're true and they actually happened, and you can prove that. That's nonfiction. Um, I today wanted to talk about this because I want to talk about and read from a book called Charlie and Mouse Outdoors. And it is the fourth book in a series called Charlie and Mouse, which you may have read. And the reason that I think that these books are interesting when we talk about fiction and nonfiction is that they are somewhere in the middle. So, um, so Charlie and Mouse are two boys who are brothers. And this is Charlie, and this is Mouse. And everything that happens in their lives is something that I have personally experienced because Charlie and Mouse are really my kids. So Charlie's real name in real life is Mauve and uh, Mouse's real name in real life is Lewis. And these books came about because I would sort of tell people funny stories about the things that my kids did in real life. And they would say to me, you should write a book about that. So I decided to do that. Um, when we went to revise the book, uh, it, things changed a little bit. And when we decided to publish it, we changed their names from Charlie, from Mose and Lewis to Charlie and Mouse because my editor, who is the person that helps an author make a book, um, my editor said, well, maybe Mose and Lewis won't want to be in a book someday. Maybe you shouldn't make that decision for them and you should let them make that for themselves. So we asked Mose and Lewis what the names of the characters should be. And Mose chose the name Charlie and Lewis chose the name Mouse. And so that's how that happened. And now we're, I'm currently working on book seven, so we're gonna keep going with these books. And every story in the books starts with something that happened for real, but, but sort of takes its own form. Um, and the details change a little bit. And so, so I just thought I would explain that to you um, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you this story and then we're gonna talk about something you could do at home that might be fun for you. That's sort of like what I did when I wrote these books. So Charlie and Mouse Outdoors is, a chapter book. And here are the chapters in the book. They are called Boring, The Hike, Kittens, and The Fire. And I think boring might be something that we can all relate to a little bit sometimes lately, yeah? If you're stuck in the house a lot, especially. So this is the first page. I'm gonna sit a little 
it's a point so you can see. So, Charlie was in the car. Mouse was in the car. Charlie and Mouse were in the car. This is boring, said Charlie. Why don't you make up a story, said Dad. Stories aren't boring. I will try, said Charlie. The car went over a great green mountain. Once upon a time, said Charlie, there was a great green mountain. Then what happened, asked Mouse. I do not know, said Charlie. I will think about it. The car went past a small white house. Once upon a time, said Charlie, there was a small white house near a great green mountain. Then what happened, asked Mouse. Charlie sighed. I do not know. It is hard to make up a story. The car went past a field. There was a hawk over the field. The hawk had something wriggling in its mouth. Once upon a time, said Charlie, there was a hawk and something was wriggling in its mouth. Look at that picture. Can you guess what's wriggling in the hawk's mouth? Ooh, said Mouse. Then what happened? The wriggling thing turned out to be a dragon, said Charlie. Wow, then what happened, asked Mouse. The dragon and the hawk had a battle in the sky. The dragon spit fire and they both flapped their wings so hard that it rained. Suddenly it began to rain. <gasps> oh my, said Mom. Quick, Charlie, said Mouse. Tell us a different story. Once upon a time, said Charlie. Dad stopped the car, and we had french fries until the rain stopped. I like this story, said Mouse. The hike. A hike. A hike. It was time for a hike. Charlie and Mouse walked along the stream. Mom and Dad walked, too. There was a trail. The trail was pine needles and bits of sun. Charlie found a stick. Mouse found a stick. They were good sticks. Do you guys see Mouse's stick? Mouse has a really special stick. Now, said Charlie, this is our land and we must defend it from bad guys. Charlie and Mouse defended the land. Now, said Mouse, we are in monster country and the monsters are coming. Monsters, be gone, shouted Charlie. Charlie and Mouse fought the monsters. Oh, no, look, said Mouse, pointing into a bush. Good eye, Mouse, said Charlie. We must be careful. Danger is all around us. What is it now, asked Mom. A lion, said Mouse. A hungry one. Can you see the lion? Oh, no, said Dad. Will you save us? Save yourselves, shouted Charlie. He ran at the bush. Ah! Whew, said Mouse when the battle was over. That was a close one. My strength is fading, said Charlie. Mine too, said Mouse. He sat on a rock. Would a granola bar help, asked Dad. It might, said Mouse. Mouse ate a granola bar. Charlie ate a granola bar. Look, said Charlie. I see a turtle. Yes, said Mom. Look, said Mouse. I see a mushroom. Look, said Mouse. I see a pig shouted Mouse. He jumped up. See, and there's a little pig here. Pig, shouted Charlie. The pig snorfled off. There are pigs here, said Mouse. You did not say there would be pigs. Charlie and Mouse ran back to the tent. They zipped it up tight. And I want to tell you a little story about that story, which is that originally, I don't know about where you live, but where I live when you go on a hike, the thing that you might see, that you might be likely to see that would scare you a little bit, that you would not know was going to be there, is a snake. And in the original version of the story, it was a snake that they saw and they got scared and they were like, we didn't know there were going to be snakes here. But Emily Hughes, who illustrates these books, is from Hawaii. And in Hawaii, guess what they don't have any of, not even one, none. There are no wild snakes in Hawaii. And so it didn't make sense because the book is now set in Hawaii because she draws the pictures. So we tried to figure out, well, what would be a thing that might live in Hawaii 
that would be a little bit scary, but not too scary for Charlie and Mouse. And we decided that a wild pig was the answer. But so that's a really good example of a place where it started out as nonfiction, just because it's the seed of the story is that my family went camping. But because it's a storybook, because it's not really nonfiction, because it's somewhere in the middle, we're able to change it and make it a pig. So it's, it's sort of ma imaginary, like sort of made up stories based in real life. And we're gonna talk about that later. Okay, and the third story is kittens. I did not like that pig, said Mouse. No, said Charlie. I did not like it either. What else do you think would be out there? Asked Mouse. Other scary stuff? Try not to think about it, said Charlie. I cannot help it, said Mouse. Yes, you can, said Charlie. You just need to think of something else. Like what? asked Mouse. Something not scary, said Charlie, like swinging on a swing. Sometimes swinging is scary to me, said Mouse. Oh, so Char said Charlie, well, how about swimming? Swimming is always a little bit scary, said Mouse. You know what isn't ever scary, asked Charlie? Kittens. That's true, said Mouse. Kittens are little and fuzzy. They are not scary at all. Let's think of kittens, said Charlie. Okay, said Mouse. Oh, I see a kitten, said Mouse. He's orange. And nice. He is nice. My kitten is gray, said Charlie. My kitten is named Smoke. My kitten is named Ginger, said Mouse. So they've imagined kittens. They don't have any kittens in the tent with them. They have imagined some kittens to go to sleep with. Ginger and smoke, said Charlie. Ginger and smoke, said Mouse. Look, said Charlie, smoke is chasing his tail. Silly smoke. Look, said Mouse, now Ginger has the zoomies. He is zooming. Smoke has the zoomies too, said Charlie. He's zooming on me. Now smoke is zooming on Ginger, said Mouse. Watch out, Ginger, I'll save you. Ah, and they all ran around in the tent. Then crash went the tent. That, said Charlie, was a little bit scary. Yes, said Mouse, but it was also a lot of fun. And those, that's another one where when I would put my kids to bed at night, when I would put Mose and Lewis in, to bed at night, they would have trouble going to sleep. And so we invented some imaginary kittens for them because they were a little bit worried or just awake. And I highly recommend imaginary kittens at bedtime. The fire. It was getting dark. Is it time? asked Charlie. Yes, said Dad. It's time. Charlie and Mouse sat on big rocks near the fire. Mouse brought Blanket. Blanket has never seen a fire, said Mouse. Mom lit the match. Charlie and Mouse watched. First the little sticks caught fire, then the big sticks caught fire. The sky got darker. Dad handed out marshmallows. Mouse ate his. Charlie put his marshmallow on a stick. He held it in the fire. Do not hold it so close to the fire, said Dad. It will burn. I know what to do, said Charlie. Charlie's marshmallow burst into flame. Charlie blew on it. The flame went away. The marshmallow was black and crinkly. Do you need a new marshmallow, asked Dad. Charlie shook his head. No, I like them like this. You do, asked Mouse. Charlie ate the black marshmallow. It turned out he did like them like that. Then the fire crackled, bugs chirped. An owl made a whoo sound. Mouse leaned against Mom. Charlie leaned against Dad. After a while, Charlie said, does anyone want to tell a story? Nobody answered. Charlie looked around. Charlie smiled. Charlie whispered, once upon a time, everyone was very, very happy. The end. Yay! And you can see, if you look at the end papers, which is what we call this part of the book, on one end paper is smoke. And on the other end paper is ginger. Yay! So that is Charlie and Mouse Outdoors.
And as I said, it's the fourth in the series, and I'm on book seven right now. I'm trying to write book seven right now. Um, but I thought that this might be kind of an interesting thing for you guys to think about. There's a thing I like to do when I work on the Charlie and Mal stories that I think might be even easier for kids, which is I often say that the hardest part about being an author is that we're writing in a language we don't quite speak anymore because we don't really speak kid fluently. We have to work to remember how kids think and how kids speak and how kids sort of move around in the world so that we can write books that feel right to them. And so one of the things that I like to do to get myself into kid brain is, is to sort of get myself remembering how it feels more to be a kid, is I like to go sit someplace that no grown-up would ever sit. And I bet there is a place in your house where no grown-up would ever sit. I often call this under the table thinking because when I was a kid, I would go and I would sit under my dining room table when there was a tablecloth on it. And I, you know, the, so that the tablecloth would hang down and it would be a kind of a fort for me. I would take a pillow and I would put it under the dining room table and I would sit down there and I would take my notebook or a piece of paper or some art supplies or a pen and I would draw pictures and things like that. So that's one good place is under the table. But there are, I guarantee you there is a cool spot in your house that you know about and have noticed and like that probably no grown up has ever sat in. Maybe there's a special step on your stairs. Maybe there's a closet that has a particularly nice place in the back and a light inside it. Maybe you like to sit in the bathtub or the shower stall. Maybe you like to go under your bed. And I would check in with your parents to make sure that the place that you want to sit is safe, obviously. But I think what would be a fun thing for you to do, maybe this afternoon or maybe later, is to think about what I said about fiction and nonfiction and something in the middle, right? So if you try to take something that happened in your day today, or in your day yesterday, or a memory that you have, something real that happened to you. But here's the trick. You want to think of something small, not something big. So not a big thing like, we went to the beach. You want to think about the one shell you found that one day that had a little bit of it that was purple, or the ice cream that fell on the ground, or the time you got sand in your swimsuit and you had to go swimming to get it out, right? You want to think of a very specific thing that happened. So you're going to go and you're going to sit in a place that nobody else is going to sit and you're going to try to imagine a story and you don't have to write it if that doesn't work for you. You can just imagine it and tell the story to yourself and then maybe tell the story to somebody else at bedtime. Or you could take art supplies and you could go and you could draw a picture of what you remember. But the trick to this is to take the memory that you remember, the real thing, the nonfiction thing, and then do something to make it a little bit different. So that now it's not nonfiction, now it's fiction. So if, for instance, like just like Charlie does in the boring story, if you see a bird out the window and then you imagine, well, what, where is the bird going, right? Because Charlie imagines that the thing wiggling in the hawk's mouth is a dragon, right? That's probably not true. Like you're probably not going to see that. So you could imagine, like, where is something going? What did it just come from doing? What is it thinking? Um, but you can, you can activate, you can change, you can transform and sort of imaginary um, anything. And so think of some small part of your day and then add a little bit of something different. And maybe it's a magic thing. Maybe you want to add a unicorn or a dragon or the thing that you're remembering, you want to make it something that a mermaid did or that a wizard did or a witch did or something like that. But it also could just be a regular thing. It could be that instead of being something that happened to a boy or a girl, it could be a, something that happened to a cat. And that would make it different too. So that is my assignment for you today. I will probably have more stories for you in the near future and other little writing assignments for you. But right now, you got to get a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or a crayon or some other sort of art supplies. And you got to go find a place to sit that no one else would think to sit. And then take a minute and remember. That's it. Okay, have a good day. I hope you're all doing great and that there is something yummy to eat for dinner or lunch or breakfast or whatever meal is coming next. Bye-bye.